Hello. Today we're working on the Random Gems Everywhere activity. This is our fifth activity in the chapter Types in Learn to Code 2. So in this activity we're supposed to um, collect a randomly no uh, determined number of gems. Okay, so gems will pop up in this puzzle. Um, and if you look at the puzzle, it looks like the gems will pop up uh, anywhere along uh, one of three rows, either this row, this row, or this row here. So uh, we need to keep collecting gems. Uh, we don't know how many, uh, but we do know that that number, the total number of gems, will be represented by this variable total gems down here. So as soon as we have that many gems, we're done uh, solving the puzzle. But we don't know how many that's going to be uh, until the puzzle starts. All right, now, uh, the nice thing is, is we've uh, done this kind of a uh, activity before. Um, if we remember that uh, we go back, let's see, one, two, three, to this uh, puzzle here, portal on and off. In the activity portal on and off, we also had a situation where our gems appeared along a line uh, here, one of several lines. and what we did there uh, is essentially what we're going to do in our current activity. In fact, we could actually copy and paste this code uh, in this activity here uh, and put it right into our uh, current activity, into the random uh, gems everywhere activity, and we would be done with this puzzle in two or three minutes. Um, in fact, that's one of the nice things about writing a nice function is that we can reuse it over and over again. And in this case, we wrote a nice function called move forward collecting and switching, which basically had Byte just walking along a row collecting gems. And whenever he got to the end of the row, he would turn around and when he turned around, he would flip the state of the portal. The purple portal was on, it would flip it to off. If the uh, purple portal is active, uh, was off, it would turn it to on. Uh, and that would allow us to go ahead and clean up a row and then on the way back, uh, finish cleaning up and uh, take the portal over to uh, the, another row and start cleaning up there. When it gets to the end, it would uh, turn around and turn the state to off so that it could clean up everything else. Okay, so um, let's take a look at uh, how we did this in this in this activity. Um, again, we could copy this code over and change it, and that's a perfectly uh, fine thing to do. And if you're short on time, um, you know, go for it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and rewrite it because that's what I want to do. I want to practice a little bit more. And maybe along the way I might make a few changes for the better. And my function move forward collecting and switching will, you know, get a little nicer in the process. So in our move forward collecting and switching, remember what we want him to do is just to move forward and collect a gem and toggle a switch. And when he gets to the end, he's going to turn around and uh, change the state of the portal. So I have an if statement in here that says if I'm on a gem, I'm going to collect that gem. And I'm also going to increment or bump up a value of my number of gems variable. So I keep track the whole time of how many gems I've collected. And if I'm on a closed switch, I'm going to toggle that switch to on. I'm going to increase my number of switch count. Uh, by one. Uh, and then I'm either going to move forward if I'm not blocked, but if I am blocked, I'm going to turn around, and after I turn around, I'm going to change the state of that portal, the portal that's on that row. Okay? So, uh, and we do that in here, this activity, we keep doing that, uh, move forward, collecting and switching, until we reach the total number of gems and or switches that we need to take care of. Okay, so I'm going to just sort of think about those ideas here, and I'm going to go ahead and, again, for practice, I'm going to go ahead and uh, rewrite this uh, the best I can. Okay, so let's not worry about this for right now. This says I've got a variable called total gems, which is going to be equal to the random number of gems that are appearing um, in my puzzle. In this case, if I look up here now, 
in my puzzle up in the upper left hand corner it says when I run my code I'm only going to have one to collect uh, but I can't rely on that always being the same that's going to change every time so all right uh, let's get started um, by uh, again just sort of trying to replicate what we've done in previous puzzles here so I know I'm going to want to keep track of the total the, the number of gems that I've collected along the way and that I'm going to need to be a variable so I'm going to call that number of gems and we always start with zero and we keep collecting from there okay the other thing I know that I'm going to want to turn around function because we mentioned that as we uh, get to the end of a path we're going to need to turn around so again I could copy and paste that but it's good practice so function turn around and I'll turn left a couple times here okay now uh, move forward uh, collecting gems is what I want to do here so I'll write a function move forward collecting gems and all it's going to do is if I'm on a gem if is on a gem I want to collect it and I want to increase my number of gems by one plus equals one okay um, I could also in here uh, there are no switches but I could take care of the switches uh, at the same time but this this function is just going to be moving forward collecting gems now if I'm at the end I know that by saying if um, I'm blocked if I'm blocked if I'm at the end then I want to turn around that was one thing we said we wanted to do and then we also want to change the uh, state of our portals here and it looks like we have um, two portals we have a pink and a blue portal so let's go ahead and um, make them the opposite of what they uh, what they currently are so if they're on I'll turn them off and if they're off I'll turn them on so I could put that code right in here, but it seems like something I might, you know, want to do some other day uh, where I want to change the state of both portals. So I'm going to improve this function a little bit by making that a new, uh, a new function, the idea of flipping the state of both portals. So let's just say flip the state of both portals, something like that. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to call it. Sorry, I'm not going to make that function in here. I'm just going to call that. Now, we haven't uh, made that function, so it's a decent time to come up here and make that function. So, func flip state of, of both portals. Okay, and that function simply says uh, hey, uh, pink portal, pink portal, you have a prop, you have a, um, a, uh, a variable called is active, is active, and we want to set it to be the opposite, so it's going to be equal to the opposite of whatever it is right now, so the pink portals dot is active property, okay? And let's do the same thing for the blue portal then. Hey, blue portal, set your is active equal to the opposite of whatever it is right now. Blue portal dot is active. Okay. And that function will now flip the state of both portals. So coming back to here, uh, when we're blocked, we're going to turn around, then flip the state of both portals. And if we're not blocked, we want to just move ahead forward, okay? So I'll put in an else clause in here, else move forward. Okay, and that's it. It's a nice little function. It just moves forward collecting gems until it's blocked. And if it's blocked, it uh, turns around and flips the state of both portals, okay? So uh, now in our main program, really, we just want to keep calling move forward collecting gems. We want to keep doing that until 
we have the total number of gems we're supposed to collect. Okay, so while as long as we don't have as long as we don't have the condition where our number of gems is equal to the total gems which is given for us as the uh, as the goal as long as that condition is not true we want to just keep move forwarding and collecting gems okay and whenever that is true we're going to be done with this a while loop will be done. So um, let's give this a try and let's just see what happens here. So I'll run the code. Okay, it's starting with this portal on, so it's going to move over to the purple uh, portal in the left row and it's going to move forward collecting gems and then when it turns around it's going to turn both portals off. Okay. So he'll come over here, and that'll allow him to pass over this portal and pick up the last gem. And when he turns around, he's going to flip them all back on, which will allow Byte to uh, move back over to this uh, purple portal. Okay, it's going to move around, change the uh, state of the portals. Now this is actually good because if there were some gems on this path, he'd be collecting them right now. Uh, they're not right now, but if there were, he'd be collecting them. Now it's going to turn both back on so that Byte will move over to this blue, and then move forward, collect the last gem, turn around, and turn off these. And doesn't even have to go anymore because this condition, while number of gems is uh, not equal to the total number of gems, uh, he's not going to keep moving forward collecting gems. He's done. Okay, so uh, that's it. That really is a nice uh, activity that shows us the advantage to writing good functions. So in the past, we wrote this function move forward collecting gems and toggling switches, uh, and we really are going to we could just as easily have copied and put that right in here, and it would work just fine. In this case, um, I basically rewrote it for practice. Uh, adding in a new function called flip the state of both portals just because I thought uh, this is something we might want to use in the future as well. So it's probably a good idea to test this one more time. So uh, just to be sure that, you know, since we're getting a random number of gems that <clears throat> this will work if we do get a different, uh, different starting state. Um, but at this point, I want to talk a little bit about what's going on here just to review all the things we've learned about. So in this case we have three functions, a couple of variables at the top, a constant and a variable, three functions, and a very short little what I call a main program. So our program really is this right in here. In fact, if I were to take this code out from here to here, this while loop, if I were to take this out, I'm going to go ahead and cut it. If I were to cut this and I were to say run, uh, nothing would happen, right? Because um, we aren't actually ever calling any of our functions. So we have a bunch of functions to find, but if we don't ever call them, nothing's going to happen. In fact, the one we have to call is move forward collecting gems because that function calls both flip state of both portals, the one up here, and it also calls turn around, the one up here. So if we don't ever call that function, nothing's going to happen. So let's put this code back in here. And a couple things I want to test. I want to run this again, and I want to test and make sure that it works with a different number of gems. But I also want to check um, if this function, move forward collecting gems, will work in the case if both these portals were set to false before it started. Just to reassure myself that everything works out OK. So uh, this gives us the chance to say, uh, again, um, blue portal, you have an is active property. And again, this is a good time to review what is is active. Well, uh, we can press help on it. And we can see that is active here is described as the state of a portal. Uh, an active portal transports a character that moves on to it, while an inactive portal does not. Uh, portals are active by default. Um, but really what this is, it's a variable, 
defined inside a portal, uh, and its type is a bool. Okay, and I can tap on bool and see all the things about uh, a bool if I want to as well. So uh, let's go back to this, uh, to our puzzle, pressing a little X up there. Uh, so I want to set this Boolean property is active to be false, equal to false to start with. And the pink portals uh, is active Boolean property also to be false. All right. So at the beginning now, when we run this again, we're going to get a new number of gems. And we're going to set our portals to be false. And let's see if this, uh, if this, meth if this function still works. Also, I'm going to go ahead and run this by stepping through my code. So if you want to watch uh, all the functions being called and functions being called from within functions and so on, you can watch it go here. All right. We set both portals to be uh, false, and act their active properties to be false. And now move forward collecting gem has been called. It's going to take a little while. Move forward. We have five gems we need to collect. So here he's going to turn around. And when he turns around, he's going to also flip the state of both portals. The pink and the blue ones are now on. So now Byte's going to uh, transport over to the row with the pink portal on it. I'll start collecting gems here. Make him go a little faster. Turns all the portals off, collects these gems, turns them back on, brings the pink portal back. Now takes the blue portal over to the blue side. We'll come across, pick up this one, turn the blue portal back on, transport over, and pick up the last gem. There it is. It worked. Even if we set both the portals to be their active properties to be false. Uh, at the beginning. So that's a nice solid uh, bit of code there. Uh, hopefully uh, yours works just as well. All right. Uh, if you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments section of this video. Uh, we'll see you next time when we start a brand new chapter called initialization. Things are getting really interesting now. See you next time.